Hey, hello everybody. It's our Friday Linger video. A quick uh, thought or something to ponder, to linger on for the weekend. It looks like it's going to rain all half the weekend, so maybe you'll be inside. You'll have a chance to ponder this thought. Last night we had a special prayer house. We moved it from Wednesday night to Thursday night because yesterday was the National Day of Prayer. So they uh, put together a neat graphic and they gave us some prayer prompts. So we prayed through uh, government, military, media, education, business, church, and family. So we had a great time last night just kind of praying through these different arenas and areas of uh, culture and society and life. And um, the thing I wanted to point out is they had some verses. They had a theme. Their theme was uh, from Colossians 2, uh, 6 through 7. Um, you know, exalt the Lord who has established us. That was kind of the theme. But there's this verse from Amos that kind of, I think, is worth noting. Now, you might not know any verses from Amos. I'd be surprised if you did. Because, um, <clears throat> to be honest, I don't. But how about this one? This is a good one from Amos. He who forms the mountains creates the wind and reveals his thoughts to man. He who turns to darkness and treads the high places on the earth. The Lord Almighty is his name. Now, remember, here's the thing I think is worth pondering and lingering on, if you care to take it up, is this phrase, he reveals his thoughts to man. So in the Old Testament, Amos was talking about how God reveals his thoughts to us. How did he do that? How does he do that? Now, in the New Testament, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, so he has a little bit easier access to our hearts and to our thoughts. But even in the Old Testament, Amos is saying God reveals his thoughts to man. How? I guess it's not so much a how, but uh, do you often just assume that that thought you have is your own? I mean, thoughts can come from three places. We can bring them up on our own and our own beings. You know, obviously they could be an outside voice that is not, uh, that could be quite destructive and evil, if you will. Uh, but there's also the chance that God is revealing his thoughts to you. And again, he was giving this, here Amos is saying this to an Old Testament people that didn't have the benefit of the Holy Spirit dwelling uh, within them. So I think it's a thought worth pondering how does God reveal his thoughts to us? How does God reveal his thoughts to us? Now, we're also blessed. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. We also have God's thoughts that are written down for us, his instruction and, and um, yeah, and in the, in the scriptures, instruction just doesn't seem to be an adequate word. There's much more than that. It's not just a rule book. But um, we are blessed. We have God's word and we have the Holy Spirit. Uh, but I just think it's worth pondering what Amos had to say. He who forms the mountains, all right, creates the wind, I got that, and reveals his thoughts to man. God reveals his thoughts to us. Uh, I think it's worth pondering how and, uh, and asking for more wisdom and discernment. Is that my thought or is that God's thought? And um, that's what we talk about. God still speaks. How do we hear his voice? Uh, so here's this kind of... Um, not well-known verse in the middle of Amos that kind of points that out. All right. Thanks so much. Take care. God bless. Keep dry. And hopefully we'll see you Saturday night or Sunday morning. Take care. God bless. Bye.